Canada's Auditor General released his latest report today, and among the findings, not all taxpayers are treated equally. It varies depending on who you are, where you live, and who you're dealing with at the Canada Revenue Agency. Here are some examples. In one region, taxpayers waited an average of 12 weeks for the agency to complete an audit. In, no in another, they waited more than 40 weeks. In other cases, taxpayers had to provide a receipt to the CRA within 90 days or else they couldn't claim the expense, but some taxpayers with offshore accounts were granted months, sometimes even years, to provide the same information. According to the AG, this violates the agency's Taxpayer Bill of Rights. So why the inconsistencies? Deborah Schult is the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Revenue, and she joins us now from the House of Commons. Hi, Ms. Schult. Nice to see you. Thanks for being with us. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Let me start off by asking you, how alarmed were you by the AG's findings, especially that the CRA is often treating individual taxpayers differently than it treats businesses or those with offshore accounts? So let me start first by saying that we very much appreciate the work of the Auditor General and his team and that we, we accept those recommendations and it is, it is actually something that's validated the work that we've already undertaken. When I say we, I mean the government and the minister has been hard at work for the last few years correcting the wrongs of the previous government where they've done cuts and lack of uh, support to the agency. So. We're very happy with the, with the results uh, of the Auditor General's report and the recommendations are validation of the work that we're already doing. Thank you. I'm a little confused though because the, the, the AG was looking into the actions of your government, the CRA under your government, uh, and, and the AG found that taxpayers, depending on you know what kind of taxpayer they are, where they live, who they are, are treated differently. Did that alarm you? How is that a confirmation of the work that you're doing? So what I, what I need to say is looked at the last five years and so we've been in government for three years and we've been undertaking in those last three years significant investments. It's a very big ship. The CRA is huge and it's going to take time to turn that ship. Uh, we have just appointed a chief uh, service and, uh, and data officer to make sure that, they help, that she helps us to make this transformation. It is a true transformation at the CRA to a people-centric customer service organization. That's not going to happen overnight, but we're taking significant steps to make that happen. The investment that you're referring to is $1 billion. How much of that has been spent so far? Uh, the exact numbers uh, we have spent, I, I'm, it's in the multiple millions that we've spent on uh, phone, uh, phone system uh, upgrades. We have sent, spent on uh, bringing in 100 plus more very uh, experienced auditors to help us with our audits to make sure that there is tax fairness. We've also been uh, training and uh, other service centers. We've been opening centers in the north to make sure that those that are having a more harder time accessing our services are able to do that. So this is where some of the money, the, the one billion dollars that have been invested over the last few years. We've also been gathering a lot more information and processing through that information. As you've seen, we've had a tax gap assessment going on that will be finished next summer. And so we wanted to make sure that, uh, that we have the data, that we have the people and the resources and systems to support this transformation that we're undertaking and that we can get the fundamentals of our system is we must have fairness and consistency across Canada. So w there's lessons to be learned here. We, we are not where we need to be. We have a lot of work still to be done, and that's the work that we're undertaking, the, and because the of, government and the ministers mm -hmm. undertaking now. Because of that work that you say has to be done, that's why I'm asking about how much of the $1 billion, because to be fair, I think you said you've spent a $1 billion. You, I don't think that you've actually invested the full $1 billion. That's why I'm trying to sort of figure out how much has been invested so far. I know Senator Percy Doan has, down, I'm sorry, has uh, asked order paper questions. The last answer I believe he received was that the government, as of the end of fiscal year 2016-27, had spent 35 million, only 35 million of the $1 billion. Has it been substantially more since then? Yes, it has been substantially more. The actual number I don't have with me right now, but I can certainly get that for you. But it has been substantially more than that because we have another year underway. There's still more work to be done. So that billion dollars is still required for that work that still has to be, got, be done. That's an investment for our future change and the transformation. And it's not all spent yet because we have much more work to be done. How much money has been recouped from people with, you mentioned that tax gap, it's estimated by the CRA to be $3 billion. How much money has been recouped, for, thanks to your government's efforts, um, from people holding offshore uh, accounts? 
So I think we're in the 40, 43, I can't remember the exact details, a million dollars that we've been able to recoup from uh, addressing the tax gap and those offshore accounts. But it, the, the actual details, again, I can get you, but it's been significant uh, work done and recouping is on the rise. So, you know, early days, it takes time because these are complex uh, accounts and it's about, you know, working those processes through. There's obviously appeals. So some of these things take time. So while we may have, have we may be showing that there's much more opportunity to get, uh, we're also finding that it's much harder. There's work to be done to get that to realize in our bank account. So are, are, are the process. Yeah, are, my, my question though is, are there, are the appropriate amount of resources of from the CRA being directed towards that? You say 43 million, let's say that, you know, something in around there. I, I take your point that you don't have the exact number, but if it's 43 million, I mean, the CRA itself has identified a gap of $3 billion. Is it a signal because there's, so, you know, that's such a discrepancy that, that the CRA is disproportionately, for example, going after not the guys holding or the, the men or women holding the offshore accounts, but everyday Canadians, everyday individual taxpayers instead. So we most, uh, the government and the, the minister and the CRA is most definitely going after, they're, they're focusing on offshore, they're focusing on uh, large corporations and high net worth individuals because that's where we've seen from the tax gap there's best advent, uh, best opportunity to deal with those. That those are where uh, the majority of people or the the opportunity lies to be able to bring that fairness. It's all about bringing fairness and consistency to the tax uh, to, to, to the tax system, and. And obviously that's where people are concerned that they're, we're not going where we need to go, but we absolutely are. We're going to those three areas right now, putting a focus there. But as I mentioned before, it takes time. You know, we, the, first you have to you know, figure out who they are, then you have to be, be able to go after them. They have the opportunity to challenge that. So we go into the courts. So you can see that this is a process. So where we still have the gap of a large amount and we haven't recouped all of that, we are working on it and somewhere we may be successful Successful, some where we may see opportunities to have to change legislation or change our process to be able to make sure we get more of it. But having that tax gap information was something that the previous government never wanted to focus on. They didn't seem to think it was important to know where the opportunity was to go after people that are avoiding paying their taxes. So this is where we, uh, the government of uh, the government of the day, um, has put the focus where the public is asking us to focus and where the data is showing us that we need to focus to make the system more fair. All right, I have to leave it there. I'm out of time, but thank you so much, Ms. Schultz. Appreciate thank your time. Thank you so much.